right to the heart of things, just the one line. Welcome again, and thank you for being here on this special open and affirming celebration. We're so glad that you're here, and I invite you now, if you're moved, to just take some deeper breaths, let yourself arrive a bit more fully, to hear whatever word God, spirit, love has for us today. And I offer this preacher's prayer from Psalm 19. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A few months ago, after our family had settled into our evening routine at the dinner table, one of our few screen-free zones, by the way, so I cherish it. And just as we were into our first few bites, my husband announced that he had determined he was gender queer. Now, my husband and I have been together for more than 20 years, and this summer married for 15, and we have shared honestly about our needs and our hopes our evolutions, and after I chewed enough to not choke, I responded with something like, what in the world are you talking about, baby? Is there something you want to tell me? He went on with clarification of terms and more descriptions. He said "Gender queer means someone who does not follow binary gender norms. I don't follow all binary gender norms. We just didn't have a way to talk about that when I was coming of age. And on our conversation went around the dinner table. I asked permission from my daughter to share that about a year ago, she asked us to call her Peaches instead of her given name, Eliza. That was very challenging for me. I, my first response was, well, that's a soft fruit. Why would you want to be called a peach? But uh, again, the conversation around our family dinner table was about how the people in her life would respond to that request as much as the request itself. At the beginning of the 1990s, philosopher and gender scientist Judith Butler described in the publication Gender Trouble that the category of sex is constructed. For Butler, this meant that the categorizations of bodies in male and female are assignments without natural legitimacy. And she wrote of the construct of heteronormativity, which at the time was like, whoa, 1995, so long ago. And she challenged the idea that by the assumption that biology is equal to the physical characteristics, right? So that's what we're talking about here. And in 1995, the term gender queer first appeared in print and was used in mostly activist and academic circles. Just not to make any assumptions here, since we're all about getting real over these weeks, sex refers to your biological characteristics. Gender is something else. And I'm realizing that seeing gender as a construction is new to some, and therefore challenging to some of our pre-existing mental maps. And maybe like other parts of human life right now, we are living in a time where a lot is in flux. New understanding, new insights, new ways of seeing what is fixed and what isn't. And for some of us, this is challenging and new. And for others of us, and I'm hearing this and heard this this morning, it is liberating and life-saving. What if gender as a construct has held us back? And what if manhood and womanhood and even our understanding of what it means to be a human right now are all really under construction, under review? And what if this is a blessing? What if this is a good thing? James Baldwin wrote that love takes off the masks that we fear we cannot live without and that we know we cannot live within. What if this is happening, what is happening to us, is that our greater love is inviting us to take off our masks. Because really what my husband was saying is that he is ready to take off masks, to come out of the boxes that have bound him and others for so long. Really what he is pointing to is the suffering that comes when those who don't fit don't have ways to talk about or places to belong, 
norms that others have put on us, that the world told us to wear. These can feel like masks that we're forced to wear to cover up to get by. And these masks can be suffocating physically and spiritually. And I'd love to hear right now in the room, what are some gender norms that were put upon you, some masks given to you? And I'll give you an example. Boys and men can't be emotional and cry. Girls and women can't be angry or loud. What are some that you'd like to name, maybe take off today? No wrong answer. Let go of needing to be a big jock. And I heard a beautiful example this week where someone, the world wanted him to be a jock, and it turns out he was a kick-ass saxophone player. Yeah. Right, AK? And it took him a while to find where you could be seen as you are, right? I heard some over here. Girls have to wear dresses. My beloved Jackie right here in pants <laughs> telling me, you want to be queer today? Take off that robe. Right? But I got I got my this is my 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 crazy earrings are me like coming out a little bit. What else? What what would you like to yeah? Doing things where you're finances. Don't risk your life by checking. Women can't handle finances. Don't let your wife have a checking account. That is absolutely we can take that mask off. What else? Barefoot and pregnant. Lisa. Don't let women carry heavy things when we're carrying the whole world. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to let go of today? Yeah. Men should assume authority. Jean. That is hilarious. For those who didn't hear that, changing the voice of Siri because they don't want to be told directions by a woman. All truths welcome in this circle, my friends. I'm sure there's so many more we could name, right? As Pete and I shared last week, one of our colleagues in the Rocky Mountain Conference, Reverend Mallory Everett, says she is open about calling her church queer. Not just her as a bisexual person or her people, but her church. She says that the label of queer lets the world know that they are a place of welcome, a safe space for all. She says she leads a refugee church and that this is the way they take seriously that Jesus is on the side of the most marginalized. And so it's clear to me, and we'll say it out loud and proud today, that it's a gift that we are queering the church, that we are flinging wide the doors and making room at the table, moving over and taking off our masks and coming out of our boxes. What a gift to be alive for a time like this. I really do think that what a privilege to be here on planet earth right now where each and every one of us can be freed to be a woman doesn't have to be being reduced to being accommodating and nurturing being a man doesn't have to be reduced to being strong or bold to be someone who doesn't conform to any of this doesn't have to be wrong or weird and it doesn't have to be seen as bad. We are saying it out loud and proud today. One of Jesus' most complicated and valuable teachings is the one I put in there for you, and I believe it is true with a capital T, that often we must lose to find, to surrender to gain, to lose parts of ourselves and our way of thinking to find and embrace the higher love. The questions before us today are, 
are we willing to trust the unfolding, the rainbow spectrum, to follow where our higher love pulls? Are we willing to live more fully into becoming the refuge for all of us and each of us and whoever the world calls strange? Are we willing to lose to find for the sake of our greater love? What a gift to be here for who we are, this queering of the church. And now I'd like to invite Gwen forward to read our open and affirming statement. Before I start, uh, I'd like to thank everybody who had a part in crafting this a uh, few years ago, and uh, to all of you for actually living this for the past 18 and a half years that I've been here. So, now our open and affirming statement. At Community United Church of Christ, you are loved. Others may think you are not worthy of that love, but God put you here as you are. While others claiming to be people of faith have told you that how you identify or whom you love makes you a sinner or an affront to God, we at Community United Church of Christ unwaveringly believe that God loves you just as you are and that God's love is why we are open and affirming. As an open and affirming congregation, CUCC, welcomes all individuals, lesbian, gay, bisexual, heterosexual, queer questioning, cisgender, asexual, pansexual, transgender, intersex, binary, non-binary, gender fluid, gender queer, bigender, grayscale, cross-dressers, third gender, and sexual and gender identities yet to be known, named, or belonging to other cultures. CUCC welcomes all families, single parents, single people, couples, nuclear and blended families, families without children, extended and chosen families, polyamorous families, and families yet to be known or named. And perhaps most importantly, we welcome all questions. Questions about gender, questions about sexuality, questions about identity and how identity influences our lives and communities. We welcome questions about the families we have and want. Questions about what family means and how we create family. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. What a gift that we have a place and a people where we can take off our masks, where we can uncover and see all of our colors. What beauty has been hidden? What talent might come forth now? What love has been boxed up that can now be released? We are ready to take off the mask to come out of the boxes that have bound us. What a gift. If you are a little queer or super queer or somewhere in between, you are welcome here. May it be so. Amen. Greetings to you wherever you are watching this. For those of you whom I have yet to meet in person, I'm Reverend Nicola Marsh, pastor here at Community UCC. And we see that people like you are watching our live stream each week. And because of this, we are excited to be embarking upon an experiment. And we need you. If you are engaging with us regularly, finding meaning in what we are about, we would like to extend a special invitation for you to be among the first CUCC digital disciples. For signing up for just $10 a month, you will receive a t-shirt with the new CUCC logo. And we are also exploring the idea of offering other content to those of you who are part of this new and growing area of digital ministry. Sign up to support us in this new way at cuccboulder.org backslash support by clicking on the yellow donate tab and noting you are a digital disciple in the instructions. Or as always, we welcome an old fashioned check mailed to us at CUCC PO Box 3646, Boulder, Colorado 80307. Thank you for being and building the beloved community with us. And thank you for your gift, whatever it might be.